This is a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We head straight to a second conversation where we look at the international day to end obstetric fistula. We have a guest, Messi Agbo, who joins the conversation. She's a team lead, Fistula Care Initiative Lagos Chapter. Uh, Messi, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's get straight to it. We understand that, you know, 2020 actually marked the countdown to ending obstetric uh, fistula by 2030. And that's the plan according to the reports being made available by the Secretary General of the United uh, Nations. But before we get to the conversation, what is obstetric fistula? Okay, so um, obstetric fistula is um, an abnormal opening connecting the vagina to the urinary bladder or the rectum. So it's um, an opening that makes a woman to um, urine comes out from the vagina instead of the normal way. And then sometimes we also have rectal vaginal fistula where feces comes out from the vagina instead of the anus. So it's caused by several factors. We have um, the physical factors and then we have the social cultural factors. So the physical factors include um, um, improper use of obstetric instruments like when a woman is in labor or all these orthodox midwives where they, when a woman is in labor, the instruments that are used during labor, those things can cause fistula because it can create a wound on the pelvis and if it is not treated, it can make that place to be rotten and before you know it, there will be an opening there. Then we also have um, obstructed labor when a woman is in labor for too long and probably the head of the child will press onto the pelvis making the pelvis to be soft. The membrane will get weak and that can lead to an opening. Then we also have cases of abortion or other kind of surgeries that affect the vagina. Then we have the sociocultural factors, definitely poverty, where persons who cannot afford medical health care can go to orthodox midwives and they'll be treated that way. So those are the various causes of um, fistula. Well, a uh, very, very important uh, topic to look at and uh, uh, very great to give this a kind of awareness to the people out there because hearing you talk about it, it's really worrying. Um, is, is this, you know, prevalent? Is it rampant in, 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 in our society in Nigeria? Do yes, it is. you have quite is. a number of people coming down with this? Yes, it is. So um, apart from the North, where, of course, there are cases where there are early marriages and all of that, we also have... Um, cases here in Lagos. So, um, like we, the Fistula Care Initiative, we have two cases currently that we are attending to here in Lagos State. So, um, due to the fact that um, it's not just initially we had the case of okay, Fistula can be caused by early marriages. So, our focus was on the north. But right now, we've realized that there are other cases, just like I mentioned, the obstructed labor. So those cases, those are, that forms like 90% of the cases we have here in the south. And it's also rampant in other areas in Nigeria. What are, what are the dangers, you know, um, of, of, of having such an ailment, a fistula? Um, is it terminal disease, for instance? If, if untreated, does it lead to death? You know, does it affect childbearing, you know, conception? Yes, it does. So, um, if it is not cared for because you have urinary incontinence, that is the case of vesical vaginal fistula. What is urinary incontinence? So those okay. who do not know, take it, take it easy on us. Okay, okay. Um, so urinary incontinence is you can't control your urine. So it just comes out, you move on the road, you, you're sleeping and you just pass out urine. So those cases, if it's not treated for persons who don't have a proper hygiene, it can lead to urinary tract infections. And those infections can also lead to um, problems during childbirth, or it can even lead to miscarriages where the womb will not be able to you know, carry a child for so long. So those are a lot of the cases if it's untreated early. So it is not basically a terminal disease because there's a surgery, surgical repairs for those who have the fistula care. So um, that is why we have some NGOs just like us that um, cater for surgical repairs like that before it gets worse. Okay, so um, let's get to, I mean, who can actually be affected by this? Because also reports will say that um, it's expected that 13 million 
more children or child would actually get married by 2030 due to the fact that um, you know families want to find a way to you know take away the burden of poverty caused by different factors so who is suitable i mean who's subtle to um having this um, crisis or situation well um i can't say anybody is because as far as you, as long as you're a woman you have the there's a danger for you to have it it's just for you to be careful so initially would it be more prevalent in children yes for children who maybe get married early so they may have more danger in having this fistula because apart from the fact that um, they may have to have childbearing early they would be introduced to sexual intercourse early and that is another way of getting fistula uh, um, so you, you talked about the the, the treatment, uh, 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 the repair, if you want to call about talk about you know this injury. Uh, you mentioned surgery. Yes. So so let's talk about that. What are the ways to uh, to repair this, this this injury? Well, just like I said, it's surgery. So the only way we basically surgery. Yes, that's basically the only way because the tear it's an opening, so it has to be fixed. And what's, what are the chances, what's the success rate, um, you know, for those who are able to undergo this surgery to repair um, the, the, the fistula, do they, do they, do we have a high, you know, chance of coming out uh, okay? Yes, um, so far we've recorded like 90% chances okay, of coming okay, out okay. okay. So it's just um, for, just as we said, we need to equip the medical sector, the health sector, so that the facilities will be proper. Because sometimes you see few cases of people going for surgical repairs for fistula and they end up with um, a bigger wound due to the fact that the fa their facilities are not up to standard. So, but so far we've recorded like 90%. Jesus, that's uh, that's uh, that's really really sad. If anyone is meant to go for sur surgical uh, repair uh, and they have a uh, something worse, that's really sad. But um, um, you talked about early treatment. Uh, had you mentioned early treatment? Yes. Um, is there is there a, a an early stage where one can detect? You know, when we talk about breast cancer, we hear uh, early detection. Is there a stage, an early stage where one can detect to be able? Uh, to embark on that early treatment and if so are there any signs to look out for yes um the signs are so glaring because just as i said urinary incontinence you won't it's it won't hide so you may be sleeping on your bed and you wake up with urine everywhere and you may think oh maybe i just bed wet but when you're moving you see that maybe you're stained or you're wet or something so the signs are there from the beginning so the only problem we have is that a lot of people cannot pay for this surgery. So before they can get to somewhere, because we have some centers in Nigeria that undergo free surgical repairs. So before they can you know, reach out to those people and all of that, and a lot of people fall into depression. So basically within that time, there are a lot of um, speculations. And because some people don't even know about fistula, so they may term it as being spiritual. Oh, really? Yes. So hmm. before Spiritual they... how? I mean, <laughs> is it um, well, an attack on village people or something <laughs> like that? So um, one of the current cases we have, um, the, pers the lady is into depression right now. Oh. And she initially, she has termed it to be spiritual. So it was after some series of tests. And even after it, she was diagnosed of having fistula, she couldn't still believe it because you know, it's a bit rare in the South. So it's one of the things we preach that if there are a lot of people, like you can reach out to them, people who have the same case, you can reach out to them and know that you're not the only one with that disease. So um, basically within that time, within from feeling depressed and trying to look for money for surgical repairs, so it may take a lot. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, apart from the fact that um, so one of the um, symptoms that you have mentioned is that you have urinary inconsistency. What are the symptoms should one look out for? Um, you may have fever and other, um, um, other symptoms of an infection. But the main cause, sometimes some people don't even have other symptoms. They just have the urinary incontinence. Some people usually have difficulty passing out urine by themselves. 
or those who have the rectal vaginal fistula, they have difficulties passing out feces. So those are the early signs. Mm -hmm. you, you talked about the, the, the cost of, of treatment. Um, it sounds from what you're saying it's quite expensive. What's the average cost of this uh, the surgical repair in Nigeria? Um, basically, we have um, 400,000 Naira. Um, so, but it doesn't include the tests because you have to undergo a series of tests before the you know, surgery. The so, so if you want to include the tests on an average, how much will everything cost? About 500, 600. About 600,000 Naira. That's a lot for a lot of people in this part of the world. Um, so, so you've talked about the challenges and what, what the authorities, government and indeed society can do. Um, number one, providing avenues for affordable or even free surgery and tests, I believe. Yes. And I also heard you mention uh, uh, equipment uh, to be able to have the surgery carried out professionally and properly. Um, um, have you, have, apart from the non-governmental organizations who are working in this space, are the government, either state government, local government, or federal government programs addressing fistula that you are aware of? Well, um, I was aware, aware of one in Akwaibom State, that was sometime in 20, 2019, where um, the first lady of Akwaibom State organized some kind of outreach for women generally, and it also included fistula. And then there are some other, um, there are some health centers. Um, sometime last year, Lagos State government made a recommendation that um, government hospitals should carry out free surgical repairs for fistula patients. So there, there are others, but it's a gradual process. For, for those who are listening this morning who may have such a, uh, you know, um, an ailment, I think the important thing is that they're getting to hear from you that this is not spiritual, they're not, it's not rare, it's not something they should hide, you know, feel it's just them. It happens to people. There's an explanation to this, all right, and that they can get help. Sure. Is, is there a number to call, for instance, your organization or other organizations or government helpline? What can they do once they discover this is a problem I need to solve? Okay, so um, basically when you go online, you see um, international or government organizations or NGOs that care for fistula patients. So for we are the Fistula Care Initiative. We are on Instagram, just the name, and um, we have numbers to call. For Lagos chapter, we have um, the head of the Lagos chapter. Okay. So um, when you go to the Instagram page, you can get that, or you can just call 081-37382200. Once again? 081-37382200. All right, all right. So on Instagram, it's called Fistula, Fistula Care Initiative. Initiative. Yeah. Well, it's a very important uh, conversation we've had, Mercy. Really, really uh, uh, scary, you know, what some women would have to go through. And uh, she said the leading cause, one of the causes would be early marriage or early exposure to sexual activity at a young age. And, and that's why it's, it's, it's worrying, you know. Mm. And that's why the statistics that has been put out that mm. you have about 1.3 million children going to be married of by 2030. Uh, cause for a lot of concern. I wish that, um, and I'm also hoping that this would not be in vain because it's a campaign to actually end, you know, this uh, fistula concern. Thank you once again, Messi Abo, for coming. Thank you. All right. Well, from one Messi to another Messi, <laughs> you're both wearing red. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't know if you, you, you planned it today. <laughs> no, we, you're both, uh, I'm not even, uh, you know, I don't even know complexion. It. <laughs> All right, anyway, two for the price of one, you may say. Um, Messi, it's been a, a thrill this morning on on the breakfast, uh, interesting conversations, and of course, ending on a good note with some awareness on something that's really important for the public to know about so that we can take action to save lives. Mm. And that's it. Uh, many thanks for being part of the breakfast, and thank you so much, Messiabo, for being part of the show as well. Uh, we hope that you seek all of the help that you can get. Uh, reach out. The internet is available with all of this information, and, and we hope that um, everyone, all hands, would be on deck so we can put an end to all of this. And that's the size of our conversation on The Breakfast. If you missed that on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. We return tomorrow. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Kofi Bertels. Thanks for joining us.